I recently took my first trip to Japan and I decided to stay in a capsule hotel for a couple nights. So here we are, home sweet pod. So a capsule hotel, if you aren't aware, is basically a hotel with halls filled with a bunch of sleeping pods. The first ever capsule hotel opened back in 1979 in Osaka. It was definitely no frills, but now they have popped up all over Japan and other countries, so they're pretty popular here. And these days, you can find capsule hotels with really cool modern designs that look pretty trendy and appealing to stay in. So today we're gonna check out two of these modern capsule hotels, see what they're really like, and if you should stay in one, if you visit Japan. The first one is called the Zen Tokyo. They market themselves as a luxury capsule hotel, and they definitely have a much better aesthetic than some of the ones I had seen online that felt really cold and sterile. The price per night does vary here like most hotels, between $30 and $80, so I would say this hotel is about $50 a night. Okay, this is the check-in area, and it smells like a sauna in here, like I, I love it. And I just really like the like sleek design. You just give them your passport, fill in some info, and and then you're good to go to your room. So this was one of the main sleeping halls. They had about four different floors, I believe, of these, and it was always dead silent in this room, so you felt like you had to be really, really quiet all the time. There were a few different kinds of pods here. This was the deluxe pod, so it's a little bigger. It's almost a full-size bed, and you have a little room where you can keep your suitcase with you. I think this one even had a window, which was pretty cool. Very convenient that you had some room to have your suitcase with you. If you were in a smaller pod that didn't have space for your suitcase, this is what you had to do. Okay, so you get a little locker. It is dead silent in here. That's why I'm being really quiet, just in case like someone like I said, super quiet in here and I always felt like my suitcase was gonna wake someone up. So it's kind of like a hostel. You'll have to put your stuff in a locker. All my stuff fit in here, no problem. So yeah, we're just gonna shut that. And heading back into the hallway, we're gonna check out the smaller pod that I actually stayed in for two nights. So this is it, it's basically just a twin bed. I have a really wide lens on my camera, so it does make it feel a bit bigger in here. Okay, so I have a little lock box right here. Actually a good amount of space, so we can put some stuff in here. Since you don't have an actual door that locks, if you're like a really deep sleeper and you're worried about someone maybe stealing your stuff, it's nice that you can put your stuff in here. I'm a super light sleeper, so I didn't really use this. Here's another look at the pod though. I mean, I thought it was super cozy. I liked the design. Since this pod is a little more expensive, you have the luxury of actually having more vertical space. So I could stand up in here no problem. And that made it feel not so claustrophobic. Like I really didn't feel claustrophobic in here at all. So I've been wearing these like two pairs of pants all day because it's so cold out and now I'm gonna try and take off the jeans in my little pod. So I had to stand on the mattress but there is enough space to you know stand up and change in here if you want to. Pretty cozy in here. The pod mattress itself is comfy enough like I'm a pretty high maintenance sleeper and I'm, I'm good with it. So right here we have a little reading light which is cool. There's also a fan, so I'm gonna try that out. Where is that coming from? Oh, we can make it. Oh, wait, that's awesome. So I have my own little like AC in here. I have my room light right there. All this stuff. And then like all my stuff in here. I'm digging the pod life. I'm really into it. And then in the rest of the capsule hotel, in the basement, there is a workspace and a little bar area. So you can hang out here, get some work done, like open up your laptop, charge everything. It's nice that there's a space for that. And then because it's Japan, there is of course a vending machine, which came in handy because I really wanted some water. So your pod does not come with a bathroom. Just like a hostel, you have to walk over to a kind of communal bathroom. It's a hotel night routine. So the bathroom wasn't huge, there was about three stalls. It did feel really clean and it wasn't super busy. When I got ready to go to sleep, there was no one else there at all. They have makeup remover, that's amazing. So there were a bunch of products that you 
don't even normally find at a hotel, like face wash, makeup remover. So I definitely took advantage. That was really nice. So this is a drawback of capsule hotels. You really aren't ever gonna get your own bathroom in one of these. It's also kind of annoying to have to go back and open your locker and get your suitcase out every time you need something from it, but that's really the nature of budget travel in general. Whether it's a capsule hotel or a hostel, you kind of can't avoid that. So it does get pretty dark in these pods, at least at this one, but there was a little light that still came in. I wear a sleep mask every night anyway, so this wasn't really a big deal for me, but you have your own little outlet so you can charge your phone and you know watch something before you go to sleep. I would also recommend earplugs which I wear every night anyway because you only have a curtain so you can hear other people if they're walking around or being kind of loud. So the next morning, I took a shower in this surprisingly nice shower. They had a ton of products. It was like a rainfall shower. Very nice, no complaints there. This place hooks it up. They have hair dryers. You could have, what is this, mouthwash a sponge, a razor even. I was really shocked with all these little amenities they had and it honestly was clutch because I forgot to bring a brush, but it really came in handy. I was impressed that they had so much stuff. And then again, I got ready in this bathroom and there was really no one else there except for my friend Lauren who was traveling with me. It didn't feel too crowded or anything, so I really didn't mind it that much. So because the Zen Tokyo wasn't as pod-like as I expected, I booked another one that had more traditional claustrophobic looking pods to check it out. The building itself is so cool, and this is a lot more pod-like. So we're gonna find actual pods stacked on top of each other. I, I feel like it's gonna be really claustrophobic, but I'm gonna go in and see if I could handle sleeping in one of these. So this is the room with all the sleeping pods. My first impression is the pods are actually a lot bigger than they looked online. So they don't look like too claustrophobic, but I'm gonna go find mine and we'll see. Yeah, it's just a bunch of these things and it's like all black in here, it's really cool. So unlike the other hotel, these ones are stacked. So there's one on the top and one on the bottom and you have this little ladder thing, so you can go up. So here's a little pod hallway. There's probably like, I don't know, 20, not quite 20 pods in this hallway. Gonna enter the pod. Okay. I mean, that's a good amount of room. You know, I don't feel, I don't feel claustrophobic in this actually. So you are able to close your pod. And now I guess it's a little more claustrophobic, but still it just kind of feels like, I don't know, a bunk bed. I mean, there's there's room to go like this. I obviously can't stand up, but um, you know, there's some room. Oh, I can turn the light on brighter. Oh, I can dim the lights. That's kind of cool. <sighs> I don't love the plasticky feel though. It's like not very homey. I don't have like, I don't know, the other one definitely felt cozier. This feels a little sterile, like am I in a hospital? You know what, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm starting to freak out. So while I will say these pods did seem bigger in person, even bigger than these video shots make it seem, it's still, I don't know, when I put the curtain down, I did feel kind of claustrophobic and I didn't like the plastic feeling on the walls. It, I don't know, it felt cold to me. I feel like I could stay a night in this one and be okay. I'd probably just keep the curtain up, but I definitely preferred the one that had a higher ceiling. So this pod was only $23 for the night and I booked it this morning, so super last minute, only $20. I think for that price, this is like really great. On some of the other floors of this hotel, they had some areas where you could hang out, get work done, and they felt really nice, like really well designed. Okay, so here on the eighth floor, we have this little desk area. It has a really cool view, and it just is very minimal and nice. You could get some work done here. Decently comfy chairs. I mean, I could totally edit here. It's a nice little spot. It's not huge though. There's not a ton of chairs, 
but it is pretty cool that they have this. I love all the natural light, it's just so nice. So I was really impressed with the common areas of this one. It had a really cool view because you're eight stories up. In general, they had more common areas in this hotel than the other one. So this is the seventh floor. It's right below the desk area, and this is a small lounge. It's not super big online. I thought it was gonna be bigger, but it's pretty cool that they have it here. Um, the other pod hotel did have a lounge area as well, but this one feels more, I don't know. I think it's just the view that makes it feel like really just nice, you know? So kind of weird thing about this pod hotel, there's like, outdoor stairways to get to the next level. So to go down, the elevator doesn't stop. We have to go on this skinny little stairway. It's a little scary, but. And here we have another little lounge. This one is even smaller, so it's really small, but you can get a little work done here, just hang out, whatever. And then down below this level, there's actually a small gym. So here's the gym. It's very minimal, really small, but you know what? Most pod hotels or hostels or budget hotels don't have a gym at all, so it's pretty cool that they have this. And I'm a fan of treadmills, so I feel like that's all I need. There's just like a lot of like open space. No weights, nothing like that, but. So then on the bottom floor and the second floor, there's a Norwegian cafe, which is pretty cool. So you can get breakfast, coffee, just hang here. It's kind of like a coffee shop. It has a cool design like the rest of the pod hotel. So of both of the capsule hotels, I definitely like the one with higher ceilings a little better. I would say both of them felt like a hostel, but a little bit nicer than a hostel, but not quite as nice as an actual hotel room. It's always just nicer to have your own room to really spread out and be able to shut the door and talk loudly, you know? Oh my gosh, I wanna live here. I think most people look at these and go, oh my God, it's so claustrophobic, I could never stay in one. But the first one really didn't feel claustrophobic at all. And the second one did a bit more, but in person it did feel more spacious. I think these are a great option if you're traveling on a budget and don't wanna spend hundreds per night on a hotel. You do get what you pay for, it's not super luxurious or anything, but it is comfortable enough to get some sleep. Mm -hmm.